Welcome to Comic-Con in America. Hi, thank you. Hi. Comic-Con in America. Comic-Con in America. Yay, I'm here. I made it. <laughs> so when you got the script for this role and you were cast, what did you bring from your own personal life? I think you wanted someone to be a man. You know what? It, I didn't have to bring any of... I didn't have to pretend to bring anything because it was me. The character was weirdly written for me even though Felicia had no idea who I was so it was very natural the process of becoming Sybil the fairy I didn't have to work too hard I just had to just envision a fairy which was weird I've never done that before but it was so much fun to do and being a part of this was very cool yes I want a nerdy man yes my future husband will be smart very smart and so I knew that being a part of something like this could one day lead to going to Comic Con that was definitely an incentive for me let me not lie I even told Felicia like babes we better make it to Comic Con honey and um, I'm an honorary nerd and fantasy worlds and telling stories about that world it's been done so many times and I wanted to be a part of something that was original and done in a fresh way and that's what this is there's nothing like third eye I'm so happy to be a part of it Thank you. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah, it feels very fulfilling. I feel great. <laughs> Essentially, when I read the script, you know, you, you get, you know what you're getting into when you're talking about fantasy drama or fantasy comedy. You're like, okay, I understand the world. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Goblins, demons, la. But then you read it and you're like, oh, it's deeper than that. Oh, it's funnier than that. Oh, it's more real world than that. And yeah, this is unlike, this story is unlike any story I've ever read. And it kind of like borrows from all the tropes that we're used to and then flips it on its head. And so I really enjoyed reading the scripts, getting to know all the characters, their backstories and becoming Sybil the fairy. It was not work at all. It was a lot of fun. The funny thing is, some of them I didn't know who they were. So I was like, ah! I was telling my friends, they were like, wait, you're working with, who? what? And I was like, oh, wait, yeah, I guess they're a big deal. So like, I was so naive, but the, I did get starstruck with Will Wheaton because essentially I'm he was the only person that I actually was acting alongside everyone else I wasn't in the room with them but I knew they were part of the project but with Will like the day he came in I was just like okay this is weird. I'm I'm doing this we're gonna do this and we were in these two booths opposite each other and I could see his face and we were like uh, sometimes in our scenes we got very hot and heavy and we were arguing and he'd be shouting at me and I'm like Will Wheaton's shouting at me it was very it was very surreal and um, I loved it though and yeah like I said I'm an honorary nerd and I'm willing I'm new to this world but I'm willing to fully submerge myself so I now know that I've shared an audible series with major legends so I'm very excited <laughs> Do you know what? I was going to start, but then in the end I was like, do you know what? There's no point because this is nothing like them. I was like, oh, let me go and like get some, you know, some do some research and just get some inspiration. But then when I read the script, I was like, oh no, this is more like, if, if, if I had my own fantasy series, this would be it. It's a fantasy series for people that love it and people that aren't used to the world and it, it just collides. And it's so funny and a lot of fantasy series aren't as funny. <laughs> so for me, yeah, I didn't need to. It was for me I just genuinely just enjoyed getting to know these characters in the world I was thrown by the language Esper Esperanta I'd never I literally thought Felicia had made that language up and, uh, and like we was, I was saying all these words and I was like is this Latin and she was like no it's Esperanta and I was like wow she made up her own language called Esperanta good for her and then I just found out today that, that she didn't make that up so um, that was interesting but yeah being introduced to like vampires and werewolves and dwarves and goblins and demons is something I've been well aware of and uh, I'm a, a low-key low key nerd, I did the Twilight thing, so um, I was aware. But yeah, this is such a modern take on all of that, it's not like anything you've seen, I can't compare it to anything. It's more Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy than it is anything that Tolkien ever wrote, so yeah. <laughs> Oh God, it's hard because I had it in my mind when I was acting it out. Then when I listened to it, it got bigger. Like the, the sound effects 
really do something. Like it just makes the world seem more real and not fantasy. When I was acting out the lines, I was like, okay, cool. Yes, this is what this is the world. And this, da, da, da. then I listened to it and I was like, oh no, oh he's scarier than I imagined in my mind. Oh no, oh we we're in the darkness. Oh, I'm not trying to give away spoilers, but essentially it it just. Anything you can think of, it just blows that out of the water when the special effects and, and, the, and the sound of the world gets edited in. And uh, yeah, I, I've never experienced anything like it. And in my mind, I look like me, but a bit more Beyonce-esque and uh, with big, beautiful purple wings and um, yeah, but, and a tiara for no reason. Like that's, that's my character. And uh, yeah, <laughs> the, it, it's so funny. I was telling Felicia, the cast actually look how they sound. So it's, she did a good job with casting everybody. So yeah, we could really bring the characters to life. This is your first experience working with Audible. Does it make you want to follow in her footsteps and Ooh, do you know what? In the UK I had, my first ever thing I made was a radio comedy for the BBC. So this isn't my first time doing that kind of genre, but it, it would have been my first time with Audible, and yeah, it's so easy to just run for it and run for your dreams and go for it, and no one's telling you we can't afford that explosion, or you know, I don't know how we would CGI those giant wildebeests onto the legs of these men that are scary. Like it's just crazy that we can just do anything when it comes to audio, and so yeah, listen, this might be my beginning, but it will not be my end with Audible. There will definitely be other things coming out. I'm very excited. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, oh, sorry. Awesome. Kansas City, Muse TV, Cherry the Geek. Awesome. Yeah, who's, uh, yeah. Hi. Um, as a sound designer um, and Audible, you rely heavily on sound effects and sound design. What went into the creation of the series as Audible? Is there a lot of Foley? Was there a lot of... Um, yeah, so like Mumble's the company that was doing that for us, and you know, n n knowing like what I like what I wanted to happen, what I wanted stuff to sound like, uh, but like going like it's like, well, we'll probably have like some like because you know, I'm used to just like free library sounds, yeah. and you just work with what you got, and you hope you mix it in the right way to like where it sounds real and not, uh, um, and you know, sound library like music is another thing where it's like. You know, you can go through song after song in these libraries, and you're like, it all sounds fake, or like it sounds digital, or it sounds like you know, like it's just not like you know. You want to make it sound like someone like made music for this thing or scored this thing, and like that someone was actually getting you know like the shoes on their hands and like doing the you know, crunching, and so this company Mumble like came back with like their first pass, and I, we were blown away, like by what they were able to like pull off. It's like the music was all so like specific and good. And like it's like did a good job of making it feel big, but also like almost like a '70s TV show. Like you know, it felt like Columbo sometimes. And um, and like the and the foley, it's like where I'd be like, it's like wow, the the sound you got for like the pier is like really really cool. They're like, yeah, we went down and record that. And like it's like, I was like, you should you you don't have to do that. They're like, but like they're super nerds about that process too. And so like once they kind of start doing that, I started my mind sort of expanding. Like you know, I was like, oh, what else can you do? Can this thing sound like that thing, and like, and they kind of, they, that's their language, and they figured that's so well. The music is something that blew me away. The sound library they found, it was just a sound library like any other one that people use, but like, it was an older one that dated back into the uh, 60s and 70s. And so it's all this like, just library music from like, studio musicians, so it's actual bands, and they were playing music that was popular at that time, and so that's why it feels like real songs, because they're still like, some of those songs are 40, 50 years old. But, they're, but they were specifically made for commercials and TV. So that's like the part that like blew me away from that process, yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, of course, yeah. You know, it's funny because like I, I was like making little notes in the script of what I would like request here and there, and it was very sparse, you know, like little stuff here and there, and I was like, oh, I don't know, maybe this will like be overwhelming to the listener. Um, and it was like trying to listen to other stuff that like it's like other people that do it. Um, but uh, like I kind of like just, you know, suggested like what I wanted the tones of things to be. But like they were able to just like kind of come in and like um, 
like once they showed us this like one little thing, they were sh like showing us like a portal opening up and like this like was, was a, where you know the part where Laurel and Kate like there was like a swirl of magic around them like uh, like like they just said they're like oh here's what we're working on right now and me and Felicia were like on the Zoom meeting with them and like, both of our faces just dropped we're like this is what it's gonna sound like like this is good and like it just but it, like it like I said like it kind of like ex ex expanded it it's like so like starting to like when I then I started kind of going like okay like and then. I started realizing it's like oh the physical space. I kept on thinking about the geography of scenes, where you want to know where people are in a in a place, and and like it's like and if they're closer together, if they're farther apart, what the room is like. So if someone's doing dishes, if someone's like you know kind of like tapping because they're nervous, like that kind of stuff, like started to like, you know, eh, like expand like what I thought we were even capable of doing, or what I was even capable of doing, you know, because once someone kind of shows you that like it's possible you can start to just like you know spin out and then like there were certain times I was just like I was like all right we got to rein it in I'm kind of like I was like make it seem like she's like pulling a piece of gum off of it like you know that kind of stuff and like um uh and like sometimes that can be distracting so it's almost like you don't want to do too much or too little yeah did I answer your question okay great yeah Yeah, well, it's like with, with TV, you know, you're worried about uh, like, you know, a few different dimensions of like uh, of the light, of the physical space, of the coverage, of the cuts, of the like people, uh, of the blocking. And then like the actual performance sometimes like it kind of starts to like, you know, go lower in the list of priorities. And uh, being able to really zero in when it's just voice is just kind of like, what's the intention behind this line? What's the truth behind, like, what, is she, what does she really want to say and what is she not saying? And that's all just kind of like performing, that's acting, you know, in a nutshell, but like at the same time, as a director, being able to really just focus on that and be like, uh, it's like, you know, with like Felicia, because so much of the stuff is from like her own kind of uh, issues and stuff that she's dealt with like growing up through the years. And like, um, and almost sometimes like, you know, cause she had all this stuff in her brain. And I would have to remind her, I was like, hey, remember, like, it's like, you were kind of like, this is a bummer for you. And like, it's like, so it's a bummer for Laurel and it's conflicting and it sucks. And like, it's like, and you're, do it's like when you catch yourself doing the same things to the Kate character that like your mom did to you in real life, like, you know, it's like, that's gonna like mess you up. And like, and I never, you know, so much of my directing has been like comedy based and parody based. So like being able to like just direct performance was such a like uh, it was so exciting and not like going like and like and what's the button what's the little joke that gets us out of this or like a, yeah it didn't it was good but it didn't sound like that character from this thing we're like parodying you know so that was probably like the biggest um, the, the the biggest joy of it like it's just also like and just because it's all it's Felicia's thing it's 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 like you know it's like I'm here to help facilitate and like get her to the point. And also, like, that's a weird thing, because I've been in her position before, where you're running the show, and, like, it's, like, your show, your name's on it, you're the lead, and you wrote it, and, like, it's, like, and you can get so inundated with everything else you have to do, and you don't want to, like, have, it's already so egotistical to even be doing that thing in the first place. And so when you go, like, uh, like, it's, like, it's, like, I'm going to give myself another take, and, like, you know, like, like, you do that, and then, like, you feel the boom operator go, like, <sighs> like, you know, just that kind of, and then you feel like like there's like oh I'm such a narcissist, but like being able to be there for her and knowing that feeling that like she's like no 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 it's fine we got it and I was like no 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 you're gonna want another one and that's something that we like helped each other off on that other show we worked on which it's like uh, like she'd be like how was that I was like you're gonna want another one or I would ask her how was that and she's like you're gonna want another one and it's and it's knowing the person too and being close to the person that like you know really I know I went on a tangent but yeah yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was it was the best. It was like, uh, just like, and she was always there. She has it all in her head. I would even get sometimes, because like we were jumping around so much, that I would like, you know, almost mess up my job as a director and kind of like go like, where, where is the scene? Which episode? Because like, you know, because it's all piecemeal sometimes. It's like, we have this person today, we have this person tomorrow. Um, you know, we're just trying to get through all of it. Um, but it was uh, like, having her there was kind of like, you know, like a external hard drive. It was very, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. With their support, uh, I, you know, I was blown away by 
I've never had, like, it's, it's rare to have network notes come in, studio notes come in, and you, like, you're like, ah, they're right. <laughs> it's like, you know, you almost want to, like, fight against them because it's just like, it's like, it's a whole boss dynamic. You know, don't, you're not supposed to like your boss or get along with your boss. It's like, you know, but, like, when they come in and, like, you're like, oh, okay, you have this job for a reason. And then, like, the first couple times it happens, it's like you relax and you just start to really, really dig in and love it and, like, expect good notes. And, like, it's like, I really couldn't have, like, you know, I don't think any other place would have given me, me the opportunity. It's like, you know, I'm like, TV and sketch stuff, but I'm not, I'm not like, it's not like I've directed cartoons, like, which is like voiceover stuff. It's like, you know, I'm just, a, you know, I'm just like an old joke boy that, like, you know, that has done a bunch of other stuff. But, like, it's for them to, like, trust me uh, and for Felicia to trust me, like, I mean, was, this is like one of the, the things I'm proudest that I've ever done, and I, like, I can't believe I got to do it. And so, like, uh, I'll always be indebted to, uh, you know, like, Audible and, and Felicia. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, of course. Yeah. I, hope, I think everyone will like it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much. I'm glad. Uh, I'm just really excited to talk about this. It's really wonderful. It's been uh, five years in the making. Well, more than that, really, but five years just working on the audio project. Surprisingly different. Um, audio format is surprisingly different to write for because you don't have a lot of the stuff that you think you rely on with performance of people's faces, with um, the camera. It's a lot of thinking about your audience point of view and making sure they're not confused and making sure you're painting the world and the place and the action in a way that's understandable that people don't have to come out to, uh, of, of the immersion to be like, what just happened? So that's been a really huge process, you know? We have a narrator character played by Neil Gaiman who helps a little bit, but at the end of the day, you have to craft your scenes in a little bit different way than you would if, if we, you were writing um, straight a film or TV. Because again, you take a lot for granted when you have a camera on someone. Neil Gaiman uh, is pretty great. I will say that he is, and the fact that he decided to do this um, was, I, I did not think that he would agree to do it. I do know him, uh, I consider him a friend, and you know, whenever you ask your friend a favor, you feel kind of shy about it, so I'm like, please don't feel any pressure, but will you do this for me? And the fact that he said that he would do it, because not because he was a friend, but because it was good, was literally made me cry. Uh, because his opinion is probably the best opinion in the world and in this genre as well. Um, I couldn't ask for a better compliment. And he brought so much to the table. His humor, his improv, like it really is, um, you know, most of it was scripted, but here and there there'll be a little line, you know, thrown in by some of the cast members, especially London, who's a comic. Like, it's just like, crack me up. So it's, a, it's the biggest gift in the world. This cast and the crew has just been amazing. So I originally I originally wrote the first episode as a TV series, uh, a TV pilot, and I did pitch it to all the networks. Uh, 2015, I think it was a long time ago, y'all, uh, and they did not buy it, and it was very crushing. In fact, there were some very uh, rude rejections for some people, and you know what? Those people don't, aren't working as executives anymore, so that's pretty funny. A little bit of sweet revenge. Um, but you know, I got really devastated, and I ended up doing a lot of development for other people's projects, and it was not very great, and just not a very ex good experience, uh, Hollywood writing for me. Um, then I was able to work with Audible and making this one of their originals, and they were like, okay, great, 10 episodes. I was like, wait, what? Um, and that was the opposite, because suddenly I'm here, and because of circumstances, I ended up writing almost all of it alone. I had some joke writers who came in after many of the drafts to help me like punch up a little bit, some friends. But at the end of the day, I wrote 400 pages plus myself. And um, it, that was more, I think, than any other project I've written, um, even longer than my books, which is very funny. So it was like going from zero to 100. And what was wonderful about it was being able to know that everything needed to be written before we recorded. So I could really take the time to build the arcs exactly the way I wanted them do the callbacks exactly the way I wanted them. Um, and so I hope people appreciate that. Like this is a comedy and it's a fantasy comedy, but it's not a sketch comedy. 
it's not a joke. Like, they're jokes, but because the characters are in real situations. There's life and death stakes. There's drama. There's, you know, heartbreak in a way. And the real issues that we're working with. And I really hope people, when they listen to this whole, which is a whole, essentially a season of television, I really hope that they feel that, that satisfaction of being, going through a real story. You know, I, this is a new format for me, so I, I can only hope that people really, really love it as much as I do. And I mean, it's my baby. Like, I will advocate for it to, uh, you know, to the nth degree. Um, you know, I definitely love the characters a lot. You know, there could be other ways to do these characters and tell stories with them, but to me, this is a very satisfying whole, you know? You're not going to walk away from this feeling like, oh, there's a cliffhanger, you know? Like, that's what's really important to me. If you make great characters, you can take characters anywhere, but the plot needs to be satisfying, and that's what I really aim to do. So, um, going from writing the script to actually production, when you imagine this in your head, did anything change now that you've heard the new episodes? Um, you mean like, uh, that, uh, now that I heard it, like... Now that just everything's kind of come together, and you have voice oh. actors, and you have the sound effects, what you imagined in your head, was it different? Oh yeah, I mean, again, it's been six months of post-production on it, and the, the attention to detail on, especially the magical effects, the portals, the fairy wings, like just little, little details like that. Uh, I didn't really appreciate how much work. I was like, how long is it going to take to get these things done? And we used every single minute of it because the revisions, the thoughtfulness, um, you know, this. I, I can't talk enough about the soundtrack, Mumble. Uh, the, they're up in San Francisco where the story is told, set, and so they would go out and record things on the, you know, on the, at the wharf to put in here. It's so authentic and wonderful, and a lot of it is sourced from the '60s because I wanted that sort of like very granola hippie vibe of, of San Francisco. I wanted to feel real and gritty, um, and they really accomplished it. So I will say that. You know, especially the music and the sound design, it's bigger and more cool than I ever could imagine in audio. And and I think that's really a testament to the quality level that Audible is offering with their originals. Oh my gosh. Well, I could just say Jacqueline Carey has a new book out. And she's a fantasy author who I adore. Um, in fact, I interviewed her at, I think, a 2008 comic-con and it was like an interview but it wasn't really it was just me with a cell phone and like I was so nervous so the fact that her new book is coming out is uh, really exciting to me yeah I can't talk about any TV or film things because I'm on strike I'm actually on double strike right now and I'm really um, you know, I'm able to be here talking about this because it's a different kind of contract, but at the end, my heart is on the strike line, um, especially as somebody who's been through it with uh, TV writing. I mean, the writers, the things that are going on in this industry are really, really bad. And um, for me, if I wasn't a diversified performer and creator, I, I would really, really be struggling um, just like my, my friends are. It's not like I'm not struggling, but you know, I'm diversified. So I protect myself a little only because I work outside the system, but a lot of people are having to quit because of the financial bottom line right now. And so I am, you know, I'm not thinking ahead for this project. I'm just thinking about the audio right now. And um, I'm just really super proud of it. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. Yeah. I mean, unionization is happening all around across the country, not as a coincidence. It's because labor force is not being appreciated, and uh, profits are going sky high. That's that doesn't work. <laughs> Thanks. All right, great. Oh yeah, you want more question? Yeah. What was it like working with Audible in general? I feel like they're very supportive of their original um, products. And uh, when they said yes, it must have been very exciting. It was an amazing opportunity and very intimidating, you know? Like, I originally wanted to have someone help me write with me, but it just happened that COVID just kind of destroyed every opportunity for that. And so I ended up writing it. And... Um, it turned out to be the best gift ever because now I'm a much better writer and the fact that I got to follow the story through and make it very personal on every level 
is amazing. And like I said, I've had a lot of development with executives, and, uh, and it hasn't been the best experiences for me in Hollywood. I know that that's not universal. Um, they're great executives out there, some, you know, I just happen to roll the die. But I will say that every note I got from Audible was something that made me excited, and I think made it better, especially since they know audio format. That was really something that working with them to make sure every scene was accessible and clear, understandable, and vivid uh, was really a cool process. I really am thankful for that. Thanks a lot. Yeah, nice to meet you guys. Yes.